Live. Yeah. Nice. See it live. Okay. All right. We're ready to go. 701. Uh, welcome everybody to the January 2021 uh, Mayfield Board of Education meeting. Could I have a roll call, please, Mr. Snyder? Mr. Fanaro. Here. Ms. Krosek. Here. Mr. Hess. Here. Mr. Hughes. Here. Mr. Tressy. Here. Thank you. Tonight, uh, we have a uh, student of the month with us uh, from Mayfield High School. We have Michael Huss, our uh, senior at Mayfield High School. And uh, Dr. Kelly is going to uh, read a little bit about Michael. Congratulations, Michael, and your family. Okay, thank you. <laughs> a lot of applause there. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Fenero. We do indeed have a, a very special young man. He's joined by his parents, Mr. and Mrs. Huss there. Uh, I can see they're very proud. They're smiling behind you, Michael, which is always a good thing. Uh, but you are a special young man. I know you're also uh, a man of humility as well. So I know these things can be a little bit uncomfortable for you, but we have uh, a ton of nice things, if you can't see it here, to read about you. And I think you have, your mom has the proclamation behind you. So if you want to hold it up for everybody who's watching on YouTube, that'd be kind of nice. But let me begin. The Mayfield City School District and the Mayfield Board of Education present this proclamation uh, to you, Michael Huss, student of the month from Mayfield High School. Whereas Michael, a senior at Mayfield High School, is described by his school counselor, Mr. Joe Hayes, as the leader every student wants to follow and the student every teacher wants to teach. That's high praise indeed. Whereas Michael leads his classmates in the classroom and on the field and court, excels in honors and advanced placement classes, and serves as the class chief executive officer in his career te technical marketing program. Whereas Michael is a four-year member of Mr. Legan's Principal Advisory Council, an Avis Award recipient and captain the Mayfield High School varsity football team, basketball and track teams, while maintaining an impressive 4.18 GPA. That is really, that is impressive. Whereas Michael is a four-year letterman in football, three-year letterman in track, three-year member of the basketball team where he earned two letters. What happened there, Michael? Um, he is described by his math teacher, Mr. Nighty, Mr. Joe Nighty, as a student who brings a great work ethic and a positive attitude every time he steps in the classroom. Michael is not afraid of an academic challenge and has excelled in two of the most challenging math classes offered at Mayfield High School, culminating this year in AP Calculus BC. And where as uh, the same characteristics that make him a great athlete, make Michael an even better student and young man. He carries himself with class and dignity, holds himself to a high standard and works to meet that standard. Combined with his great sense of humor, Michael is one of the great student leaders of the high school. And whereas Mayfield head football coach Rand, uh, Ross Bandera describes Michael as a student athlete who makes strides to become one of the best leaders on and off the field. It is a huge testament to a strong upbringing and personal drive to make him one of the best people to ever walk the halls at Mayfield High School. I, go, I wanna tell you, Michael, I've never heard that in all the proclamations I've read. He is a person that young people will not soon forget, but will strive to become. That's pretty powerful stuff. Now, therefore, be it resolved on behalf of all the members of the Mayfield School community, Michael Huss is named the Mayfield Board of Education Student of the Month for Mayfield High School on this very day, January 20th, 2021. And I'm wondering if that's a sign of things to come for this young man. Michael, congratulations. We are so proud of you. Congratulations, Michael. Mr. Thank and Mrs. Sir. Huss, thank you for the honor of being able to have such a terrific young man in our school system. Did you want to say anything? Uh, just thank you very much for the honor of 
being uh, chosen. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you can see the looks on the on some of your teachers' faces here. How just how much they love you. So, good luck, Thank to you. You. Michael. Congratulations. Congratulations, Michael. Round of applause. Hey. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Mr. And Mrs. Huss, congratulations. Um, it's some wonderful things that were said by your, your teachers and your coaches. Uh, good luck in the future to you. Our next uh, item on our agenda is our presentation. Uh, tonight, uh, we have the Mayfield High School here. Uh, we're going to have our building presentation by uh, Principal Jeff Legan. And then the all access learning will follow right after that. So I'll let you take it away, Mr. Legan. All right, thank you very much. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Let me bring this up. Slide this over. Can everyone see this? Yes. 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 There it is. Okay. All right. Um, Mayfield Board of Education and, and Dr. Kelly, I'd like to thank you for allowing us this opportunity uh, to share and really celebrate the progress that we've made at Mayfield High School um, under your guidance and leadership. For the past four years, our teachers and support staff have worked uh, extremely hard and worked tirelessly to reshape and to revolutionize their instruction for our students, and to be honest with you, who've grown up in an on-demand world saturated with mobile technology and social media. So, you know, for some, you might say, you know, how could you even compete with that, you know, in the classroom? Our teachers have truly adapted. And um, I know that we have only a few of our staff members here tonight, um, but I, I am proud of my entire staff. Under the all access framework, our teachers have helped to personalize instruction for all students at Mayfield High School. It doesn't matter if our students are in the option, a self-paced course or a quote unquote traditional course. Personalization is occurring everywhere. And yes, even during this global pandemic. You know, you, you think about since March 13th, uh, March 13th was the last time that we were in school without a mask on. Um, it was the last day before our buildings closed uh, and we, we went remote. Since then, our teachers have taught uh, under a different schedule and they have flipped their classrooms, allowing more conference time with their students. And what this does, it's, it allows them to get their, to know their students' strengths and areas of growth on a deeper level. They are creative. Uh, to give you an example, Mr. Hughes, uh, he's one of our history teachers. This year, he pulled out his guitar and played Pachelbel's Canon D on his guitar and asked his students to get their musical instruments out so they could practice for their uh, Enlightenment Salon. Furthermore, he held a press conference where each student had to choose um, a key figure during the Enlightenment period, and they held a press conference. Um, so some students chose John Locke, some uh, chose Isaac Newton, others Voltaire. Uh, so they had to go ahead and defend a stance on a specific issue. With regards to personalization, right now our students get to choose from over 130 elective offerings, learn in a manner in which they wanna learn and in an environment that they choose. Um, I, I cannot think of another high school in our area or in the state that allows our students to do this. Furthermore, our students are assisted with one-on-one -on -one, uh, device. Our teachers have that same uh, have the same support where they they also have a device. And our teachers, students, and parents have a learning management system which organizes and, make, and makes things easier for students to access uh, their, the content. And this is all because of your leadership, and we are truly grateful. What you're going to hear more about tonight are the number of ways that we have personalized instruction to meet the academic needs of our students, as well as the social and emotional needs for our students. So with that, I'm going to turn this over to uh, Mr. Mulliman. 
Thanks, Mr. Legan. Um, if you could uh, maybe jump over to your screen with the presentation on it. You don't see that? Uh, we're seeing uh, the uh, word or the Google Doc. Yep. So let me bring this over. Sorry. Can you see that? Yeah, it's a uh, small though. Just maximize it. Yep. There we go. Let me go back here. Awesome. There we go. All right. So. Thank you uh, for having us tonight and uh, congratulations to the Huss family. Michael, you are uh, one of the best kids to walk this hallway. I wasn't sure who had that quote, but I, I'll echo that. So congratulations to you, Michael, and your family. Um, I wanna start off with some professional development that we, we, we created this, this year in the summer and August uh, to get ready for this year. And really our instructional leadership team and our ad, ad, admin team really came together to support one another and, and really to support our, our staff so that we could provide high quality instruction for any scenario. We had no idea uh, what was going to happen, uh, you know, whether it be remote, in person, or a combination of remote and in person. So the best thing that, that we have done, though, is that we were prepared. We had th these tools already um, rolled out for us. Um, we had Schoology, the, the learning management system. Our teachers were familiar with it. We had offered self-paced courses, the option. These were all examples of all access learning. And like Mr. Legan said, we were more prepared than other schools to take on this challenge of remote learning or in-person or a combination of in and out. And I think the first semester really proved that to be true. Um, I, we, did, we could have asked a number of teachers to present tonight um, but we did want to highlight three uh, specific teachers, if you could go to the next slide. Miss um, Kerman, um, one of our math teachers, has really become a, a great leader in our, dist in our uh, school and in the district. Um, but she's a member of the uh, instructional leadership team and has really pushed forward uh, on some um, um, progressive uh, instructional strategies with flipping her classroom. There's a picture there uh, of her on the left side of your screen. I believe it's on the left side. Um, she and both Ms. Zenovic, we just knocked down part of a wall so that we could space kids out. We had to get creative with this. They didn't miss a beat. They showed up and like, what is going on? But they didn't miss a beat. They figured out ways to make it work so that whether a kid was in, in one of these rooms or at home logging on with Zoom, um, it, 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 was, it was seamless. And Ms. Monastero there in the middle, you can see in the field house, you know, she came up with this design and created and built this screen that you can see there and hanging and spaced kids out so that we could uh, have students in person learning safely. So with that, with that, with that being said, um, all of these teachers really stepped up amongst others. Um, Ms. Monastero a, a, as a member of the instructional leadership team as well. And Ms. Zenovic presented, has presented at all of our um, professional development days and has been a valuable resource to our staff. Um, we're going to ask them to share a little bit about what they're doing in math. Ms. Monastero is doing in, in the health and PE department, and Ms. Senevix is doing in, in English classes to provide all access personalized learning uh, during this, this school year. So I'm going to introduce Ms. Kerman. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having us tonight. Um, so I can kind of just start off by saying that this school year definitely provided a lot of challenges for not only myself, but educators across the United States. Um, and it was really the push that I feel like everybody needed to really relook at how you're doing things, seeing how are you assessing students, how are you getting them to show mastery and all of that. So um, Ms. Heinel is our department head and she kind of pushed this idea of the flipped classroom, which I've always been interested in, but never again had that push to do it. So this was my chance. And we adopted this idea about students watching videos, lessons that we create through using our technology with the surface, all of that. And that's actually the lecture that would be taking place in the classroom. So with the 90 minute block, this lends itself so that the entire time, we might start with a mini lesson or a couple questions from the day before, but we're spending time practicing and doing different types of checks to see how our students comprehending this material. So you can see up in the top right corner, there's kind of this little like swirl going around and it is completely fluid that depending on wherever you're at, you kind of follow two tracks. So the first track would be you do your practice, that goes through well. You take a learn check, which is a couple question formative um, that we're pushing through through Schoology. 
And then what that does is it shows if you get a specific score, you're good to go and you can follow the darker purple arrows and jump to an extension. And once you're at that extension, once you pass through that and you do go a little bit deeper into the material, you move on to the next lesson. So it kind of lends itself to self paced if students are able to do that. But if not, it gives us a heads up of, okay, if we are catching them at the learn check and they don't show that score of mastery, we back up and then we can intervene. So that remediation could be one-to-one -one conferencing and just checking in like, hey, did we just have a rounding error or is this not understanding that material? So you kind of get a better insight of where students are there. And then when they're done with that remediation, they can go take that learn check again. And then if they're well enough and they have enough time, they can definitely move to that extension. But if not to keep them on pace, we move them to the next lesson. So it's this complete circle that just keeps going depending on where students are and what they need. Um, so running that flipped classroom, just to kind of give you a heads up of like what my classroom looks like on a day-to-day -day basis, is I start each class with a mini lesson. So what this allows is not only to reinforce those concepts that students are learning at home, but then they're able to catch up on something that they might've missed from a video, or if they tuned out a part of it for whatever reason, got a distraction, then they can go ahead and kind of catch up with it in class. And then it's allowing for that, uh, that I guess, like push on that material so that they can keep going forward with it. So the nice thing is with these surfaces is we're able to use uh, the technology. I think it's called display note, something along those lines, where I can actually do my lesson holding my surface in the back of the room and walk around, but then show that to the kids who are on Zoom and the kids who are in class. So when we're in my main room with the whiteboard, so they can see the whole entire lesson going on. They can see us working through it. We get participation that way. So it actually pans itself really nicely to be able to use that with kids at home and in person. And they're mini lessons, so it's a max of 15, 20 minutes at the absolute max just to kind of re-hit these ideas, get kids started, and then I can go help kids who are really struggling. So they take their practice, however that look, a typical homework assignment from last year is now done in class, asking questions, they can collaborate in their groups, however they wanna do that, and then they take on to their learn check. So with that, like I mentioned earlier, you take it, you pass it, you can move right on, hit the extension, and keep moving through the material. But if not, once I get that score, they check in with me. We have a conversation with, like I said, it's either that conferencing or maybe a remediation assignment, which is kind of the stuff that you can see at the bottom right corner. So there's two, um, two formative assessments that I use, tools that are just technology that lend themselves well to Zoom as well, um, which is Go Formative and then Pear Deck. So Go Formative is really nice for those quick, hey, here's two, three questions. This is the way that it grades it on the bottom right hand corner. So right away, I can see this student got all four right. They're off my radar. They can keep moving. And then they can now go retake that learn check and then move on to the next section. But like the second student that you can see, they kind of fell off towards the end there. So I can go ahead and go back and intervene a little bit closer with them. And then I can also kind of look at the big picture that it looks like the fourth question was the most missed. So maybe that's something that comes back up in a mini lesson the next day, or maybe we come back as a whole group around that idea. Um, and that's something that I've been working with more closely the second semester. Um, and it's nice because I can then differentiate and pull kids who missed just one question. Everybody else can go in another room or kind of start moving on to their next idea. Um, the pair deck is really nice as well because I can use uh, the fact of overlapping or showing, showing students work. They can physically write what, using their Chromebooks on the screen. So as you can see this bottom one, students all had to place some kind of character and that one looks like a fish on the pair of consecutive interior angles. So we can pull it up and show, hey, look, the majority of us got this, that's awesome. And anybody who's hanging in a different section can go ahead and retry that one again. Um, to keep kids on task, we have been utilizing the idea of completion rules in Schoology, which is really nice for that idea of self pace and it helps the students who are at home or in a different room that I'm not in in that moment that they can keep going. So they have to complete or view or make a submission on each assignment so that they can keep going. And then the nice thing is, is you're able to make completion rules through the folder. So students really can work at their own pace and they get blocked. They're not allowed to work forward if they're not understanding it. So then that's when I can come in with that remediation. Um, I have to say overall, I mean, students are being able to work however the best that they can. Whatever suits them, they're figuring it out and they're making it work and they're extremely resilient this school year, which is really great to see. And the coolest thing about being forced into this position is that now I'm really utilizing formative assessments as I always wish that I was. So now I can get that instant data, that instant feedback and be able to intervene with students who need it and then allow students not to have to sit through a lesson that they don't need that extra help with. They can just keep going. 
So it really personalizes right to them, their needs right then and there in real time. And it allows for the class to run pretty smoothly. So I'd say overall things are going really great. And then um, Mrs. Montessero is gonna go ahead and go over her new curriculum for PE. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Kerman. Thank you, Ms. Kerman. Um, I wanna start off with, it's an honor and a privilege to represent the high school health and phys ed department this evening. Um, I'd like to thank Mr. Legan and Mr. Molman for allowing me this opportunity to share the work of my department. This year, as we all know, has been a challenge, but we have turned this challenge into a positive ex experience for our students. As Mr. Molman mentioned, we transformed the field house into a safe learning environment. We had to evaluate our curriculum and, and ways that we assessed our students, and we knew that we needed to make a change. So we adapted our courses to focus on personalized learning. Our students are now assessed on project-based learning. Um, we start off the year talking about the dimensions of wellness we have our students evaluate what their wellness wheel looks like. And if you see in the bottom right of the corner, um, this is one of my students' wheels. So they evaluated the dimensions of their wheels. After they evaluated their wheel, then we give them the opportunity to take a deeper look into each aspect of the wellness wheel. And we have them create a wellness photo journal project reflecting on each aspect as, of wellness as it pertains to them. And you could see this on the left. Um, the start of Hannah Inman's. Um, so what the kids are required to do is snap some pictures where they're showing the wellness and then they will answer a journal prompt on that, um, that, on, on that question about wellness. So we personalize it towards them as compared to just testing them on their knowledge of what is the wellness wheel. We have them look more and delve deeper into what does their wheel look like and what is their aspects of health look like. We know these are stressful times and we have created um, one of the units I'm most proud of is our stress management unit that focuses on stressors, resources, and the top 10 stress management techniques. We have our students, as you could see in the middle of the screen, create a visual repre representation. So you could see in the, in the head and the neck of this person, they've listed all their stressors, but at the top, the, the sun is coming up. And what they found is those are the resources that they go to for help when they are feeling under stressed. Um, I am also very proud to say that we have partnered with the Cleveland Clinic and Dr. Rome, the head of the Children's Hospital, to evaluate the health effectiveness of health education in schools on the opioid epidemic. Mayfield High School is the only school in Northeast Ohio that is given the opportunity to work with Dr. Rome. Um, our students are creating um, opioid PSAs that will then be chosen to um, be a part of the Cleveland Clinic um, program and study on opioid use. We have not only changed our phys ed curriculum, but we have also changed our PE curriculum to focus on personalization. We had our students assess their fitness levels and create a per personalized fitness plan based on their needs. Our students have created SMART goals and are working towards achieving them. Pictured in the upper right hand corner of the, slide, of the screen is one of our students, Erica. And she was so excited when we came back from break to tell us that she had asked Santa for a barbell for Christmas to help her work towards achieving her fitness goals. I'm very excited about what we have accomplished this year. We took lemons and we made lemonade. Now I'd like to pass the torch over to Ms. Zenovic who will share with you the wonderful things happening in her classroom. Thank you. Um, similar, I just want to say thank you so much. It's an honor to speak to you about some of the things going on, not only in my classroom, but also other English classrooms at the high school. Um, I think Mr. Molman and Mr. Ligon said it best. We were very prepared, not that anyone can truly be prepared for a pandemic, but we had access to many tools and really great ideas prior to um, switching to remote and then hybrid. So some things I just wanna talk about is some of the personalization that's going on in my classroom and in other classes in the English department. So in my self-paced English three class for the last three years, we've been doing a year long PBL. A PBL is a problem-based learning project and this does go in tandem with the regular curriculum but students are asked to address a, an essential question. And that question this year was, how can you make a positive impact within your community? And students really came up with a 
a variety of topics. And some of them that always stand out to me are um, some people wanted to focus on recycling at Mayfield High School. Some students wanted to focus on improving student mental health, which I think is very relevant, all things considered. Um, many students want to focus on improving the water quality within Lake Erie. And some students, seeing what has been going on in the news, want to address food insecurity in Northeast Ohio. And what's so amazing about a PBL is it's reinforcing some of the learning goals that already go on in an English classroom, such as reading, writing, speaking, listening, but in a more authentic manner. Students are actually taking control of their own research, trying to address these, these issues in the community. And they're truly invested because it's a real problem that they're seeing within our community. They're also asked to interview um, in, individuals who are experts in the field or people that these problems are impacting. They're asked to collaborate in a meaningful way, reflect, always reflecting upon the process, what challenges they're still running into in their research, how can we go and readdress this problem, and then presenting. Uh, for this year, their final product, considering the pandemic, we're going to have them create podcasts. That way anyone can access them and listen to their final results. So eventually they will have to present a solution for their issue based upon their research, their interviews, their surveys, and their true expertise in that topic. And I would say my personal goal for my students who work through this PBL is I want them to develop a growth mindset and really embrace the challenge of not having the answer right, right away, understanding that each little piece and part of this year long PBL really does build to the final product. And it's amazing to see students allowing themselves to fail and admit to struggling in order to come up with a great product. And I think a big reason why it is so successful is the conferencing aspect. Um, I'm not the only teacher that conferences, I'm sure. My department has really taken um, this idea of student-led conferencing this year and to create relationships with our students, foster those relationships. But especially with a year-long PBL, they're, they're vital to giving them meaningful feedback and allowing them to grow. So you can see an image of a student who's actually presenting a presentation, um, a screenshot of it. Some students are invited to, to film themselves presenting with a screencastify prior to their student-led conferences and come up with their own reflections to share with me in these conferences. So then I can give them meaningful feedback. They can tell me what they're recognizing as their potential strengths or areas for improvement. And so we see that continuous self-assessment and reflection through student-led conferences. Um, and I would say, or I, I should say, it also allows myself and when I'm working with a co-teacher to tailor instruction to better meet our students' needs through those conferences. We have a really good sense of where they're at and we hear them explaining where they see their strengths and weaknesses. And then the last thing is another, um, is there are many teachers at the high school in the English department that have started to really embrace this idea of working with writers to, to reinforce writing workshops. So, um, several, several teachers at the high school have collaborated with Lake Erie Inc. and local writers from Northeast Ohio to help our students to be successful and work with the Maltzby Sam of Jewish Heritage's Stop the Hate contest. It's in its 13th year, um, but this year we, we tried to really help students find their voice, um, advocate for an inclusive society, and speaking out against bias and bigotry, and of course participating in a pretty, pretty prestigious uh, scholarship award contest. So I think the big part of this is students were exposed to new ideas and evidence about different ways to approach writing, hearing it from other local writers, not just their English teacher, having that ability to get other expertise. So those are just some things that are going on within the English department, and I would say it, it has been stressful, but I feel like many students have really embraced the personalization that has come as a result of the pandemic and teaching during the pandemic. And it's some really amazing things that they've come up with. And I think Mr. Lin is up next talking about an early warning system. 
Thank you, Ms. Zenovic. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the board, uh, thank you so much for having us this evening. Uh, it's a, a privilege to, to speak with you on behalf of Mayfield High School. Um, you saw uh, three amazing examples with Mon Ms. Monastero, Ms. Kerman, and, and, and Ms. Zenovic. Um, and, you know, it, it truly is a, a pleasure to, to teach and work at Mayfield High School. Um, every day you walk around the building and you see teachers talking and problem solving and using either a new tool or a new technique uh, to truly bring all access learning to all of our kids. Um, I am here to, to introduce something uh, that we adopted this year that is helping us personalize interventions at Mayfield High School for all students with the mission of, of our, our, our district being every student every day and allowing those interventions to, to be tiered interventions to meet the needs of all students. So what you're seeing in front of you, and when you think early warning system, I think of like a big red button in a, in a, a you know, like a airplane cockpit. It's not that, it's nothing mechanical, uh, but it is something that, that allows us to pull large amounts of data uh, for, for our students to ensure that they're all on track. So what you're currently looking at uh, it's a graphical representation of every student at Mayfield High School. They have 1,285 or approximately 1,300 students. Uh, so, you know, uh, the, the, to, the, to the right of the gold goalpost would be, you know, the top 80th percentile of students, uh, low risk factors. The risk factors that we are looking at are grades, uh, behavior, inter, uh, uh, referrals, uh, attendance, um, and then maybe a, a stability ranking. So grades, behavior, and attendance, and that pulls nightly. So it's a lot of data, um, and it, it's simply allowing us kind of at warp speed, the things that used to take us two or three weeks to compile, we might do it at a mid, uh, mid quarter point check or something like that. Um, but it allows us to intervene immediately with these students. Um, the students in the middle you're looking at are from the fifth to the 20th percentile, so the, the middle 15th percentile. Um, and then the, the students to the right, uh, or excuse me, to the left of, of the red goalpost uh, would be the lower fifth uh, percentile. So not to rank students or uh, any judgment. We like to look at it as students that, you know, have low risk factors, may need some support along the way here in green. Uh, students that have moderate risk factors uh, and maybe more a tiered intervention of supports, uh, maybe more of a pullout check-in, uh, more conferencing with their school counselor. Uh, and then our students over here on the left, we need to identify them uh, immediately uh, and, you know, uh, I guess conference with their families, the students see potentially why they're not being successful uh, and then help, the, help get them back on track and provide as much uh, support as possible. So I'm gonna turn it over to um, Mrs. Perry, who's gonna talk about uh, some of our goals. Hello everyone. So with our new early warning system, um, as Brian mentioned, it gives us that immediate access to student progress data. When we were first able to start using the early warning system at the beginning of the school year, on one screen, we could automatically pull up all of our students and see how their attendance grades and their stability factor, along with any behavior referrals, were influencing their total outcome of their grad score. And that can automatically put you on the phone, calling home, checking in with kids, and that's something that we didn't have before. So with that, you know, when we can align our work as a student support team truly to that district mission of every student every day, because we can have them, all of their progress data right in front of us with the, with the click of the mouse. Um, and our second goal is really looking at reducing the time it takes to identify those struggling students. Where in the past, you would have your teachers saying, hey, I'm seeing a pattern and, and reaching out to the guidance counselor and kind of starting that discussion. This is that immediate access for our counselors, our administrators, our academic coaches, our intervention specialists, our school psychologists, the whole student support team is able to see the day-to-day -day progress data for our students and immediately try to get them connected to the supports that they need. We can identify their concerns and needs. We can connect with the student and their families, and we can get started with that student access to those interventions and supports to get them on the right track. Thank you, Mrs. Perry. Uh, and then if you go back to the goals, Mr. Legan, please, I'm sorry. We have a couple more goals uh, with our student support team, um, really making uh, a stream, it a streamlined, efficient uh, systems. Uh, we're still working through this as a team. And I really want to highlight the folks that are on this team. And it's basically anybody and everybody uh, who wants student to, students to succeed. It's, it's our teachers, it's our counselors, uh, predominantly with our administrators. Um, it is also our school psychologist, um, and it is also our academic coaches, our intervention specialists. So we're meeting uh, often to talk about our students that are either, you know, having success 
or they need more support. Uh, so, you know, but we also need to make that a streamlined and intentional conversation because when you're talking about a lot of students, um, you need to be able to move through that data quickly and then also show results. So that's our third goal is to, to kind of think about that systems-based thinking that, that will generate success. And then goal number four is really a support goal. We always want to keep our students and our families in mind. Um, sometimes we have to bridge that communication gap with our struggling learners. Um, do they feel like they have an active uh, part in their own success? Um, do, they, do they understand our systems and how to monitor those systems? Um, what is truly going on at home? Is there economic insecurity? Is there food uh, insecurity? Uh, has there been a traumatic life event? Uh, or simply, does a student need coaching to allow them uh, to develop the academic grit and persistence to be successful in a high school environment? So those are our four goals. And then lastly, uh, not to belabor the point, but this is an individual student's, uh, this is a success story. And what you're seeing again is you're seeing three main factors. Uh, if you look at the green line at the bottom, it is a student's grades or curriculum. Um, so that pulls nightly, that's missing assignments. Those are you know uh, total posted grades. Um, this is a ninth grade student who, when they came to Mayfield High School, they were initially unsuccessful. They, they, their grades uh, bottomed out uh, and they needed some support. Um, and the, the black line that you'll see is a composite of all of the, the other three lines. It is called a grad score. So if you're looking at a student's grad score, you want a higher score. Um, and we don't, we want to quantify things. We never want to, you know, I guess equate a student with a number, but these numbers help us, you know, have some very real conversations with students and parents. Um, sometimes students will say I'm on track and you say, well, you know, you have seven missing assignments. So that's not necessarily on track. So that is something that, that really helps with the data. The red line you'll see is the attendance. Um, it highly correlates to student success in this, uh, you know, in this pandemic. Uh, so you'll see this young lady; her grades almost mirror her attendance when she she start, you know, she was being unsuccessful. And then this this uh, student uh, never has had a behavioral referral, so their behavioral, uh, I guess, line is, is very high. So uh, again, this helps us identify uh, a student early. Um, her counselor was able to. Um, you know, get the students some academic coaching. Uh, the coaching you can see, you know, went over the course of three months, uh, allowed that student to dig in and then have some success at the end of the, uh, you know, second quarter and then is starting off the new year great. Um, so at that point in time, I'm gonna turn this over to, to uh, our counselor, Ms. Hannah Grazia, who's gonna talk more about the personalization of our counseling interventions. Hello, thank you everyone. Thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. It truly is an honor. Um, I will touch on some of the ways the counseling department is personalizing our interventions this year. So as Brian said, we are trying to um, reduce the time with identifying student needs or trying to make it quicker and more efficient. Um, our early warning system has definitely allowed us to do so. We collaborate with our admin team and our student support team throughout the month while looking at the early warning system. We are able to see our top 20 students um, who who need the most support at any given moment, and it's been extremely helpful this year. Um, we're really focusing on taking action and connecting students to resources when they need them. We're using a solution-focused counseling approach, which is more of a goal-directed approach to counseling. Um, we highlight the importance of searching for solutions rather than focusing on the problems. Um, and we offer social-emotional support to our students um, at any given time. We do have our Belfair counselors. We have two at the high school. Um, we have Nancy Schomburg, who's our state counselor. Um, that stands for Social Advocates for Youth. She can see any student. Um, she provides prevention and early intervention services, such as short-term counseling, um, crisis intervention. She can do chemical screening, um, mediation, small groups, or classroom presentations. And we also have Brittany Mancini, who's a school-based counselor um, for mental health services. She is able to see students who are clients of welfare or who have Medicaid insurance. Um, she is able to do mental health assessments and see students individually for behavioral health counseling. Um, so they are super um, useful resources for our students. The counselors also hold groups, which I can touch on more on my um, other slide. And then we also have referral sheets that we offer out to families that have our mental health professionals in the area that have been recommended to us by trusted social workers, psychologists, and professionals um, in the field. So um, some direct services we have been offering. The counselors have open office hours um, 
through Zoom for families, parents, students, um, so they can pop in. They know when we're available. They don't have to schedule a time to meet with us. Um, they're trying to, to be more available, to be more open to families so that they feel comfortable meeting with us. Um, this year, we had the admin approved catch up days, which were super useful for students. We had great feedback from families. Students who had grades D's or F's um, had to meet with their teachers during that time um, to work on their classwork and, and get caught, back caught up before the end of the semester. Um, during that time, we also had mental health days. So for students who weren't meeting with teachers or if they had a study hall during a block, the counselors offered some programs centered on self-care and resources available in our community. So some speakers and resources we have, we had an MBA dancer um, with dance therapy. We had a creative, creative writing workshop. We had personal training. We had a Cleveland Clinic wellness presentation. Uh, we had a mindfulness presentation for the students. We had drum therapy and we had UH pet pals therapy. So we had some teachers who popped in. We had parents who came and even students. So it was a really cool day to have everyone there and, and get that mental health support. Um, we also have workshops offered from our welfare counselors for students, staff, and parents. So there's teacher support such as pandemic stress relief, virtual learning stress relief. Um, we have parenting in a pandemic for parents. Um, and for students, we had self-care during a pandemic and how to not be distant during distant learning offered from our welfare counselors. Um, the counselors offered groups. I offered a new student group for any new student um, to the district. I know it was hard coming into the district during a pandemic. Um, and so we had a group with those, those students so they can kind of relate to each other and work together um, to feel more comfortable. We had a grief group this year, um, a wellness and meditation group, and then um, a college and career readiness group. Um, we also offer peer tutoring. And so we um, had to take a new approach this year. Um, so some students who are remote, we had to do a Zoom um, peer tutoring. So some students did Zoom, some people met in our um, common areas at school. Um, Mrs. Bobinski had, is the head of this. Um, we connect students with upperclassmen. Um, they are able to network with, with the upperclassmen and have other social interactions as well as academic help. And uh, we are working on strengthening and growing the program at this time. Um, something I created this year for my ninth graders were math study tables. So we did find a real need in algebra classes. A lot of my ninth graders were struggling with the transition um, and keeping up and we, needed to take action. And so our peer tutoring group and our academic coaches were, were getting overwhelmed with, with um, referrals from our students. And so we kind of looked inward and we're like, and thought about what can we do to help these students and get them back on track. So we noticed some math teachers who we could use their duty in other ways. Um, and we created math study tables during three blocks during the day, two on green days and one on white days. And I placed all of my ninth grade students who had Gs or Fs um, into these study tables with our math teachers to get that extra help they needed to get back on track and feel more confident in their algebra classes. Um, it actually has been shown to be a success as of right now and um, parents are feeling more reassured that their students are getting the help they need. Um, and then lastly, our academic coaching, the counselors work hand in hand with our academic coaches. Um, we refer our students to them and we will do weekly check-ins with the coaches and students. Um, we ensure their success and their, we um, monitor their growth of their skills. So at this time, I can give um, Harry and Melissa the time to speak on academic coaching. Thank you. Hi there, good evening. It's great to see everybody. Um, tonight, uh, we're gonna talk about, Melissa and I are going to talk about the academic coaching model. Uh, a lot of people have talked this evening about the response to the COVID crisis and the innovative practices that we have implemented. Um, many believe that the um, that COVID is the crucible for all of this. I believe the greater Mayfield narrative is that we were prepared for such a time as this, that, and that because we were prepared, we were prepared to do so much more um, in a time of crisis. And, and um, everything that we're doing has just reinforced and catalyzed the importance of relationship building and the urgency now um, more than ever in terms of serving our students in a personalized way. As Mr. Lynn um, talked about and Mrs. Perry, the student support team has given us um, an opportunity to identify a capability map and um, create an enterprise that allows us to visualize what we can do um, in a logical and granular way. 
academic coaching has um, been at the high school for quite some time, but I do believe the student support team and working primarily with the ninth and 10th grade counseling team with ninth and 10th grade students has absolutely elevated um, the intervention and intensified um, the, our efforts and certainly um, brought greater efficacy to, um, this, to student success. As Mr. Lynn talked about with the early warning system, we're getting to the why of the struggle and we're able to take action in a far more expeditious way. Um, success, the success that we've had is connected to action. So we're trying to reduce the time to identify the struggling, um, why the student is struggling. And certainly that often is rooted in um, behavior or um, attendance or certainly a failing grade. But we have to look at so much more than that or our efforts could be reactionary. And so we're using um, the framework of the 16 habits of mind. And while there are more than 16 habits, we're primarily focusing on the 16 um, such as persisting and persevering, um, thinking about thinking, thinking flexibly, managing impulsivity, but creating um, that relationship with the student and um, using the habit of mind to create um, patterns and behaviors that will gain traction and um, entrenchment that are going to um, certainly um, transcend a math class or an English class or an assignment, but rather we're, we're students, we're creating a framework of dialogue where students are growing their decision-making skills so they can pivot to and use and employ the habit that's going to give them um, the, the greater success. The habits of mind focus on um, how students behave and when they're facing that obstacle, which um, action they'll employ or which habit um, they'll employ. Um, it will give them um, practical solutions and empower them to um, repeat those um, behaviors so that they're sustainable and so that they can, they, they'll have um, plenty of opportunities to um, grow them into maturity. It, they're also, the, the habits of mind are scalable and systematic and they um, absolutely indicate efficient and um, effective thinking. Um, they're dynamic and fluid, so it's not as if we master persisting and then move on to managing impulsivity. They're constantly in the carousel, and um, um, because decision-making is considered a cognitive skill, it grows um, a student's critical thinking skills. Uh, what we try to do is to, um, through, through that coaching, um, we, we look then at the the behaviors in a classroom. And Melissa in a moment is going to talk about the GROW model that we use that is absolutely personalized to each student um, so that we're weaving a thread of the habit each day and so that the student then, that becomes reliable and certainly um, a part of the student's um, behavioral and um, intellectual uh, DNA through, you can see that through skills, attitudes, and um, proclivities, how students will respond to um, a, a stressful situation or a demanding um, situation. Melissa is going to talk about the different grow models, and then I'm going to close um, with the touch points and the mentoring process that we use with students and um, their parents and guardians. Melissa? Thanks, Carrie. Um, just to reiterate what everyone said, thank you for allowing me this opportunity to talk about uh, what we're doing with the academic coaching. So um, we are starting to use um, something that we're calling the GROW model. And um, ultimately, we want to help students change their habits of mind or take um, a quality or an initiative and blossom it and um, as part of their life to help with better decision making. Um, the purpose is to engage students um, to have a strong worth work ethic, not only in their academic abilities, but in their academic spirit and confidence. And the objective is um, just an overarching prom process to help high risk students um, build stamina in their academics and really have the confidence um, to move forward. So um, we created, um, so the original GROW model is the one that's in red 
and um, it's an acronym that stands for goal, reality, opportunity, and will. Um, so essentially we're asking students, um, we're asking students to come up with a precise goal of what they want in order to move their, um, move the needle in terms of their academic success. So look at the reality, what, um, where are you and how is it going to be attainable? Um, what might um, and hinder your academic success? Like what is going on? What is your narrative that might affect or that is influencing your um, academic journey? What are opportunities do you have? And then will, it's like, how will you do it? But you need strong will. Like where are you going to find the, the you know, I don't want to be the cliche, but where there's a will, there's a way. Like how, what will you do? And so that one um, is just um, allowing students to distinguish what's attainable and consider um, where they might have a pitfall. The second grow model a student might choose to um, gear their academic coaching is um, to create an action plan um, with bold academic statements. Make a groundbreaking statement. Make something that is, what are you going to say that is so um bold in terms of your um, your education and your academic journey and how are you going to do it? Um, what skills, what access to resources do you have? Um, how will you accomplish that goal? Um, what obstacles, what do you think are the obstacles that might come in your way and how are you going to conquer them? And then I like to call it the win. At the end, you've won. Let's look back. We made this groundbreaking statement. You looked, we worked together. What sources, what skills do you have in your back pocket? How are you going to conquer that goal? And now you won. If you move to the next slide, please. Um, another grow model is um, just the action of doing. Um, we just have sometimes we just got to um, motivate students. And so the G is get it together. What do you need to do and do it? Um, reflect what's worked for you in the past, what hasn't worked for you in the past. Um, how will you push yourself um, to be more in an academic mindset, to, to, to change those habits of mind, to persevere? Um, organize, is it what, organizational skills do you have or do you need? Um, how will you organize your academic agenda? And then do the work. You have everything in your, in your, um, your toolkit. Um, and then, and it's just like a game plan. And then the last one um, that a student might use in academic coaching um, and I use this term intentionally um, that it looks at the innate qualities um, a student can put forth. And I use innate intentionally because we really believe that um, every student has these um, qualities and they might be clouded over or they may not have, they may not know it, but if we encourage these, um, their positive qualities um, and we unearth these qualities, then they're gonna have game-changing um, academic success. So grit, and I actually didn't write it as essential questions, but personal statements. You have the ability to work hard and do your best. Um, you can persevere through setbacks. You're, you have determination. You can accomplish your goals. Look onward. Don't look at what happened in the past. Look forward. And then just to remind students that they're worthy of goodness that despite what has happened in the past and what your narrative may be, we're looking forward because you're worth it. And so um, we felt that these four GROW models um, by giving students kind of a direction and where to tailor their academic journey and their academic coaching will lead to um, better success and positive attitude and um, really blossom their joy for learning. And then back to Carrie. The academic coaching model absolutely increases the touch points with students. And so um, once the ninth and 10th grade or ninth, ninth or 10th grade counselor identifies um, a student um, that he or she will be placed on the academic coaching roster, 
um, that student meets with Melissa or meets with me and we um, go over the grow model. First and foremost, Paramount is developing a uh, relationship built on um, trust and respect. And then those touch points are increased um, daily. Sometimes it's um, a, a, a morning check-in, afternoon check-in. Um, then the assigned counselor meets with that student reviewing the different habits of mind that we have been targeting and the GROW model we've been working on. And then that student also um, in the conversation with his or her academic coach um, identifies a teacher who he or she really believes um, rallies for, for him, believes in um, him and or her or advocates for the student. And so then that teacher is notified and we discuss with the, with the teacher some of the, the conversations that we've had and, tr and some of the habits that we're working on. And then those, those things are reinforced within the classroom, um, personalized to that student. In addition to that, um, the student's um, parents um, or guardian is involved in the conversation. And so that the student is receiving multiple touch points during the week, um, all um, based on the conviction and the, the belief that um, Mayfield honors that in the power of relationships, the power of relationships and every student um, every day, the academic coaching and everything that we do at Mayfield High School uh, is, is rooted in that um, conviction that every student deserves an action plan um, to succeed and to know their worth and to have the tools to succeed. And quite frankly, I don't think, I think that that transcends the academic coaching model, but the academic coaching model that has been um, implemented and that the administrators at the high school um, have championed, have really has allowed that to come to, um, to, to bloom and to life. And we're really grateful for it. Some of the, the most rewarding work that I've done in my 26 years as a teacher. Sorry, I know that was a lot, but um, we're 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 really proud of all the work that 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 we have done, um, and and honestly, you know, Dr. Kelly, um, I just want to say thank you um, for your leadership. Um, you you always lead with your heart. You lead with integrity, and you always put kids first. Um, you challenge us uh, to be better. And you never allow us to be complacent. Um, and it, it has been an honor uh, to work with you and, uh, you know, to call you my mentor, my friend. Thank you. Well, <laughs> well, I wasn't expecting that, but uh, I, I feel the same way. It's, it's uh, it's really all of you that have uh, inspired me. You know, uh, and uh, you know, Tina, I'm going to disagree with you on the lemons and the lemonade thing. I think it's better than that. I think you've taken a canvas, all of you, and you've created a masterpiece. You've created a masterpiece in this environment. It's it, it, and it's amazing. And I wish more people could hear that story. I could listen to that for four hours. I know <laughs> we don't want to stay on for four hours. I know that. <laughs> And I think uh, Jeff's going to win the award for the longest uh, presentation here at a board meeting. But, you know, I, I was thinking of a quote and uh, about you that it said, um, and, and it applies to you, you are cutting a new cloth with which to dress the remaking of high school education in today's world. That's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. A lot of people say they can do it. They show a lot of bells and whistles, but you are doing it. And that's inspiring. So thank you. Great job done by everybody. Yeah, truly a, a great presentation. Um, you guys are rock stars. Uh, I mean, we, we, we talk about it 
you hit on a lot of uh, highlights about you know the forward thinking of being ready for not knowing we're going to have a pandemic, but just being just being ready to have the stuff in our pocket. You guys took it and ran with it, and when the pandemic hit, you were ready for it. And, and a lot of things that people talk about when we come into the pandemic is you know concerns about students and their mental health. And just to hear how much you're doing and how much you're doing for them to help them get a plan. Um, it's, it's, it's just wonderful to hear. Uh, and Tina, congratulations on the work with the Cleveland Clinic, being the only uh, school in the area with the work on that with the students. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, I like the GROW plan. That, that, is, that is great to help make sure that we're teaching and uh, we're working with every student every day. You guys really have taken that. So I appreciate you all. I appreciate your colleagues and what you've done with this during this time and what you have done. And uh, congratulations on that ACT score, yeah. that average. Great job. That's awesome. Thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anything else before we move on? I'd like to say, Dr. Kelly, you've got a lot of guts and courage in a time where people were trepidatious, you stood up for kids. And I think that is unbelievable. And you should be that. I think that's your greatest achievement. Oh, well, thank you, Carrie. And thank you for using all those big words with me all the time. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I got nervous when Ms. because of you. <laughs> I got nervous when Miss Kerman put up the triangles and the parallel of <laughs> no. grams and you know <laughs> trying to figure out what that angle was in that triangle there you know i thought we we're gonna get quizzed i got nervous there so you know i, I was i was kind of thinking back in my uh, high school days and i'm wondering oh my gosh i wonder what my growth plan would have looked like you know <laughs> like <laughs> man you guys that had one heck of a challenge <laughs> but i come up with a fifth or sixth one <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> all right. Anything else? If not, I appreciate all of you. Thank you uh, for your time tonight. Thank and, you. Uh, business. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So what is next here? Honor section. Our next is the, uh, yeah, number four honors. Uh, January is Board of Education Appreciation Month and the Mayfield City Schools Board of Education members are honored for all their efforts and dedication. I'll pass that off to you, Dr. Kelly. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, it, it, do you see the little sign over my shoulder here? Back? Yep. That's, a, that's a big thank you that came from the State Board of Education and the State School Board and, and uh, you know, uh, we put together, you received these books last night, and I think, George, you may have gotten yours dropped off. I got mine today, yes. Okay, so, and this is a book that, uh, you know, we put together that kind of uh, looks back on these last few months, um, because without your leadership, all the things that you just have heard, and all the things that you hear in all of these presentations, <clears throat> would not be happening without this school board. It just wouldn't. Your wisdom, your guidance, your patience, your ability to come together and, and work through varying opinions, your support, uh, your love and care, how it is you are uh, so student-centered, uh, how tough you are, uh, when, you know, the criticism can be really, really hard and sometimes nasty and vitriol, you, you guys keep above it all. You stay above it all. And because of that, the, the leaders, we behave the same way because it comes from you. We don't want to disappoint you. And that's why, you know, this book, hopefully, it kind of shows the last few months. And I know in a few years, you'll look back on this and you'll go, holy cow, right? Yeah. But it's also filled with statements from people who in our community who appreciate you, you know, through these times. And I think it's something that uh, you can always look back on and be very, very proud of. Uh, I know I will. 
And, and I'll say this, and uh, because I can, uh, but you're the you you're the best board an outgoing superintendent could ever have, ever have, and you're the best board an incoming superintendent in a school district can ever have, and that's the truth. That is the truth. At least in my humble, most perfect opinion, as Mrs. Grosick likes to say. <laughs> so thank you. we all thank you. We all appreciate you. Even through the tough times. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you indeed. And I, I, I will say, I think uh, the administration, you, Dr. Kelly, and all of the teachers, all of the staff, all of the community is what really helps all of us move forward as well. We are a reflection of our community. And it's a I you, learned a long time ago that some of the most important learning experiences we have in life are the ones that we would never choose to go through. Mm -hmm. And this pandemic will be another one. But we'll come out on the other side better for having gone through it. For certain. I agree because, you know, they, from what we heard in our meeting yesterday, there's things that are coming out of this that are making, they're going to make us better in the future yeah. you know, from what we learned. So um, we truly thank you. Uh, we appreciate everything, all you do, the administration and the staff, um, because, you know, in my humble opinion, I think Mayfield's the best school district in Ohio. I uh, haven't been too far outside of uh, Ohio to see other school districts, so I can't say, you know, with certainty, but I'm going to say we are probably at the top in the United States and world, and we talked about internet uh, in the galaxy, I think at one point we talked about, it, right? But um, you make us proud, and it's, uh, it's a great school district. Uh, people are proud to be part of it, uh, and the families are proud to uh, support us, and we appreciate their support also for this district, because we couldn't do without them. Everything that we heard tonight uh, couldn't have been done without the, the support of this community. So uh, thank you. And the book was awesome. Yes. Yeah. Let's, yeah, give, Lori, actually let's give a big shout out to Lori for putting it all together. Absolutely. Yep. Well yep. done. Thank you, Lori, wherever you are. <laughs> no, and, and hey, Ron, you know, I yes. think maybe sometime when all this pandemic st stuff's over, Al's going to take you to the model schools, next model schools conference. There you go. There we go. <laughs> yeah. it, it sure brought a lot of this to light for me. Um, not that I was ever opposed to it, but it was kind of like I was going along. But until that conference, I just became an advocate for the, the computer because the computers weren't even in the rooms. Yeah, and then the one to go one on one devices and where we've come from in such a short time. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of cool stuff out there. That's for sure. That that's meaningful. And so, as was stated a couple times this evening, we were well poised because of the choices that we had made prior to the pandemic, which really allowed us to enter the pandemic and get through it a lot differently than so many other school districts. I, I mean, the depth of the depth that that high school staff has taken personalization and how they've applied it to this, to the whole child. I, it, it is, I'm telling you, it is the cloth for what a high school needs to, to be. Mm -hmm. It truly is. It truly is. I mean, it's, it's pretty remarkable, really. You got to give them credit, boy. Okay. All right. Our next uh, item is President's Announcements. Probably think I've said enough today. Uh, <laughs> so we'll move on to uh, B, the addendum number one, approval of our 2021 board goals. Um, I'll make the motion for approval. Can I have a second? Second. And I just one mention, we did make, a, there was a couple of changes, slight changes in our, our um, goals from uh, last year to this year. 
uh, we had we had an addition from Ms. Grosick that we added in there um, to work uh, with maybe some learning with the new superintendent coming in, some learning sessions, so that we can uh, make that a goal to get us on the roll, so we don't wait for August first to get hit the ground running. We're gonna work ahead of that. So, can I have a roll call, please? Mr. Hess. Yes. Mr. Hughes. Yes. Mr. Teresi. Yes. Mr. Fanaro. Yes. Ms. Grosick. Yes. Next is superintendent's announcements. Oh, I think I've said enough too. Okay. Uh, right now. I'll say this, Michael Huss is one impressive young man. Sure you, is. He's, wow. he, he's a rare one. I like to see those academic athletes. Yeah. That, that's, that is awesome. I mean, we have a lot of them, but he's, a, he's, yeah. he's something. Our next item then is our board member committee reports. Are there any reports tonight? I have none. I just have one comment, uh, one thing item put on your calendar for April 11th. The uh, Mayfield School Foundation is looking to have a fundraiser at Top Golf. Uh, right now, its preliminary plans are being made. Uh, and when that becomes finalized, I'll let you know. But uh, that should be a great event. Uh, hopefully, uh, we can get that off the ground and and get the Mayfield School Foundation back on track with some of the fundraising that they've done so successful, successfully o over the years. Ron, I don't know whether it affected everybody else, but when you gave the name of the, the where, where we were going to do it, it came out to start it. Okay, that Top Golf. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And sorry, I think that was my fault. I hit something and it squeaked, so it probably bleeped everybody. Oh, that was me. That was. Oh, me. was it? Yep. So April eleventh. Put on your calendars. The next item is the superintendent's consent agenda A through down. A through K. I'll make the motion. Can I have a second, please? So moved. Roll call. Mr. Hess. Yes. Mr. Hughes. Yes. Mr. Teresi. Yes. Mr. Fanaro. Yes. Ms. Grosek. Yes. And on, on that note, I'd like to congratulate um, Ms. Potts on her retirement. She was with the school, she's been with the school district since 1992. Uh, we wish her the best in her retirement. And also we had um, Ms. Uh, Virginia Thomas, who was with the school uh, in the uh, food service uh, at Lander Elementary from 1999. And we wish her all the best with her retirement. Next item is the other superintendent's business. Uh, letter A, certified additional training. I'll make the motion. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Hess. Yes. Mr. Hughes. Yes. Mr. Teresi. Yes. Mr. Fanaro. Yes. Ms. Grosek. Yes. Next item is addendum number one, certified additional training. I'll make the motion. Can I have a second? A move. Roll call, please. Mr. Hess. Yes. Mr. Hughes. Yes. Mr. Teresi. Yes. Mr. Fanaro. Yes. Ms. Grosek. Yes. Thank you. Next is our treasurer's report. Uh, financial statements for December 31st, 2020. Uh, a bunch of attachments. I'll make the motion. Can I have a second, please? I'll move. Roll call, please. Mr. Hess. Yes. Mr. Hughes. Yes. Mr. Teresi. Yes. Mr. Fanaro. Yes. Ms. Grosek. Yes. Our next item is donations. I'll make the motion. Can I have a second? Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Hess. Yes. Mr. Hughes. Yes. Mr. Teresi. Yes. Mr. Fanaro. Yes. Ms. Grosek. Yes. Item 11, other treasurer's business. We have the minutes from our regular board meeting on December 16th, 2020. I'll make the motion for approval. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Hess. Yes. Mr. Hughes. Yes. Mr. Teresi. Yes. Mr. Fanaro. Yes. Ms. Grosek. 
Yes. Our next item is a mile rate change, mileage rate change for 2021. I'll, I'll make the motion. Could I have a second? So moved. Is this a change we have to do? Yes, according to policy. Okay. We call the IRS mileage rate and then we round it down to the nearest cent. The only reason I mention it looks like gas prices are back up are like in the last two weeks. And, and, and not if, going down. And if the IRS revises its rate mid-year, we'll bring it back for your at that time. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Thank you. Uh -huh. what's, it, what's it down? About two two cents? I think it might have dropped. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. We had the motion already, then we had the second. So uh, roll call, please. Mr. Hess. Yes. Mr. Hughes. Yes. Mr. Teresi. Yes. Mr. Canaro. Yes. Ms. Grosek. Yes. Next item is a College Credit Plus Memorandum of Understanding with Kent State University for 2021-2022. Make the motion. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Hess. Yes. Mr. Hughes. Yes. Mr. Teresi. Yes. Mr. Finaro. Yes. Ms. Grosek. Yes. Next item is addendum number one, our minutes from our organizational meeting on January 13th, 2021. I'll make the motion. We need a second. So move. Roll call. Mr. Hess. Yes. Mr. Hughes. Yes. Mr. Teresi. Yes. Mr. Pinaro. Yes. Ms. Grosek. Yes. Next is addendum number two, the minutes from our special meeting, uh, January 19th, 2021. I'll make the motion and we need a second. Second. Thank you. Roll call. Mr. Hess. Yes. Mr. Hughes. Yes. Mr. Teresi. Yes. Mr. Finaro. Yes. Ms. Grosek. Yes. Letter F, addendum number two, the waiver of school fees for the 2020-2021 school year. I'll make the motion. Can I have a second? Second. George. And, um, I'd like to thank the uh, administration for looking into this um, and the board for um, considering this. I think it's very important for our families uh, in this time, especially of what's going on to waive these school fees. Um, and just so everybody understands that the, the school fees are just board fees, right? correct Mr. Snyder? They're, they don't include stuff like what, cost to go into a football game or, or things like that. Field trips, um, any kind of fine. So board approved consumable fees for for courses. So if I'm taking an, an AP physics and I have to buy, uh, there's a physics related course fee as a prerequisite, those are going to be waived for the school year. AP testing, which is a big one, are going to be yeah, waived. That's that's a big one. I pr really appreciate that. And I appreciate that the, um, the peer uh, for the preschool tuition also is included in this, so. Can I have a roll call, please? Mr. Hess. Yes. Mr. Hughes. Yes. Mr. Teresi. Yes. Mr. Finaro. Yes. Ms. Grosak. Yes. Letter G, item num addendum number two, 2021-22 preschool typical peer tuition. I'll make the motion. Could I have a second? Second. And we will note that this fee has not changed. It'll stay consistent since 2018. Uh, so great job uh, keeping that uh, where it's been for the last several years. Have a roll call, please. Mr. Hess. Yes. Mr. Hughes. Yes. Mr. Teresi. Yes. Mr. Finaro. Yes. Ms. Grosek. Yes. In other board business, we have addendum number one, the corrections to the December 16th, 2020 walk-in addendum. That's a settlement agreement. Uh, I'll make the motion, can I have a second? So moved. Roll call, please. Mr. Hess. Yes. Mr. Hughes. Yes. Mr. Tr Mr. Teresi. 
Yes. Mr. Fanaro? Yes. Ms. Grosek? Yes. That is all we have for the business. Um, again, uh, Dr. Kelly, that was an awesome presentation uh, tonight from the high school. We truly appreciate it. Um, he does win the record for the longest presentation so far. <laughs> and, and for bringing the most uh, staff. And, and the most staff. <laughs> is there anything else before we make a motion for adjournment? It was well worthwhile. Absolutely. Yes, it was. I hope they all listen to it out there. I'm kind of glad we record these so we can go back and see that again. Because that is that is very important, powerful stuff that they showed us tonight. Mm -hmm. I'll pass that along. All right. Well, I'll make the motion for adjourn adjournment. Could I have a second, please? Second. Third. Roll call. <laughs> Mr. Hess. Yes. Mr. Hughes. Yes. Mr. Teresi. Yes. Mr. Fanaro. Yes. Ms. Grosek. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Great meeting. I do want to say that uh, Steve gets the award for the best background tonight. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> I thought I he was really a nice shot. That's awesome. All right.